Hey guys, welcome back to another video. All right, this is an alternative video until the other one's done processing. I had a, I had to edit out a few things, uh, but other than that, my hyperlens been changing, and we've added this thingy right here, which again power off, so on and so forth. Another system tray. There's weather up there, uh, and then we have the calendar and a whole bunch of stuff. My hope for this is it replaces the sidebar almost completely. While I do enjoy this and having this here, uh, again, it, it needs to go. Now, I changed this to use M3, so Material 3. Uh, that's why it's transparent, it's colorful, it looks good. I need to fix the header. And I also transitioned this fully to Material 3 as well. I did remove a bunch of stuff and I made it way more stable than it was before. But it kind of needs a little bit more work. I fixed the clock position. I've also centered the weather. I fixed the position of the workspaces. Everything is properly aligned on the bar now. Basically, I'm just in the cleanup phase. Now, one thing I'm having issue with is the artifacts around the dock. I don't know how to get rid of those. I, if anybody knows, feel free to open up a pull request. But this video is more about that I will not be providing any support whatsoever towards helping anybody install these dot files. They are meant for me and doing a whole bunch of stuff to make them for everyone kind of gets annoying after a while and I'm just not into it. But if anybody wants to change them and add support for that, you are free to do so. I will accept any merge requests whatsoever as long as it works and it sticks to the point where it doesn't change anything about how I have my GUI or my UI or my UX because this this setup is important to me it makes my workflow easy efficient and powerful and that's what i need it to be plus it's easy on the eyes that's what matters a lot you know what i mean something you can actually use and enjoy on a daily basis so yeah oh and if you watch to the end of this video it's probably only going to be like three minutes long let me know by just saying rock at the end because at least that way, I know that I can respond to someone who fully watched the video instead of someone who just skipped through and didn't hear a thing I said. Because I get a lot of those lately, and it's really weird. But the one thing I'm going to concentrate on next is fixing this so that it auto-detects new and installed apps. All right. So this is just like a filler video, I guess. But... To not be a filler video, we need to do some chatting about Fedora 43 and what, no, not Fedora, Fedora 44 and what might be happening. Because I like to actually, you know, throw lots of stuff in here. So this is about my hyperlink changes and I guess about this. So they're planning on dropping 32-bit multi-live support on x86-64 and stop building packages for i86. This has many, many implications. This means no Steam and a bunch of other apps as well. Now, I maybe they have a way around this, but in a long term, I've been waiting for pure 64-bit for, oh my God, I don't really know how long, but if we can just have pure 64-bit, if we can have Steam and every other application on Linux to be pure 100% 64-bit without the reliance and needs for 32-bit, I'll be happy. But if this means that that doesn't happen and Steam Valve being Valve ends up being extremely stubborn and not giving us a 64-bit client like they gave Mac OS. Mac OS is a 64-bit client. Did you know that? Lucky them. This has a lot of implementation, a lot of issues that this could cause in the long run. And a lot of people are causing a bunch of drama about it. And, you know, I'm going to, I need to find the other article to explain why this is an issue. Okay. So there's this solution, which allows, uh, wow, 64 wine and wine staging to be 64-bit and also allow 32-bit applications on 64-bit Linux platforms without needing 32-bit software libraries and prefixes. 
This is huge. Now, this could really help the transition for Fedora 44, and I think this is the main reason why they're doing, why they are doing this. And I find it very interesting that they want to do this. Again, I would love to live in a pure 64-bit world because it would be so much better. There'd be developers that are concentrating on things in the future instead of just sticking to things that don't really work that well in the past. 32-bit applications are just... They're a little bit slow compared to 64-bit. I don't know if you've ever noticed, but they've got limitations. You can bypass those limitations with hacks and other things, but it's just... 32-bit needs to be retired. Now, if a distro wants to step up and be 32-bit only so that other older systems that don't have 64-bit can survive, well, by all means, feel free. Continue the development of the 32-bit linux on the side with other people but linux itself needs to evolve and push precedent that 64-bit is possible pure 64-bit and that they can do this without any real issues and arch of course uh, is pushing this first so i'm glad that fedora is following again there's a lot of people here talking about it uh, there is WoW64 and Wine now has a little overhead for 32-bit DirectX apps. If you use Wine built-in Direct GL, which most people never do, because again, DXPK can do, I believe, eight, maybe seven, nine, ten, and eleven, and then we have VKD3D to cover twelve. So, uh, and there are plugins that take DirectX 7 and older and bring it up to either 8 or 9. So that's another thing. Wow. But what I don't want to see is uh, flat pack apps taking over because of this. It's not something I would want. This is, uh, this is, this is going to be an interesting push by them for sure. Anyway, I uh, hope you appreciate this little video. I decided to just do up and again flout. Remember, if you watch this to the end, rock. That's the word. Actually, rock fedora. There you go, because that way you've seen the last little bit. If you're new here, subscribe. Let me know your opinions on the whole subject, and I'll see you guys next time.